One thing I really want to impress upon anybody who sees this video is most of our mindset right now in Florida is slow pitch jigging. It's going out and dropping something to the bottom. Uh, having a stick bait rigged up and ready to go complements that. Uh, my best fish this past year have come, both come because I was prepared and I was ready for the situation. I had a 65 pound cobia. Uh, my buddy was pulling up on a downrigger and there was another one the same size with it. Well, because I had a stick bait already rigged up, I was able to cast over there and get it. Um, same thing with a mahi. I mean, this past Sunday we went out, it was flat calm conditions, the, the bait bite was off, the jig bite was off, so we had stick baits rigged up, and guess what? A few nice mahi came over the boat, because they were rigged up, we were able to cast on them immediately, and that really turned our day around, because if we didn't have those stick baits that day, it would have been, I think, a few small lanes and one keeper grouper. So. So we're going to dig into how to rig a cast, uh, either sinking stick bait or floating. the floating one. Yeah. And I guess this would go for poppers as well, right? Correct. So Correct. it's all yeah. the same. So so let's let's dig in, Ryan. Talk to me, man. Okay. So I get a lot of questions uh, on these stick baits. You know what hooks I'm using and the hook configuration. Um, sometimes on the belly, I'll put a treble hook and a single. Uh, sometimes I fish two treble hooks. Uh, it really just depends on the species that I'm targeting and the situation. Um, a lot of times though, I'm gonna go two trebles. I feel like it really, it gives it a really good swim using two treble hooks. So what I wanna do is show you guys exactly how to rig these baits. Um, so you're going two trebles tomorrow for mahi. For, right, right. Mahi have like smaller mouths. I mean, if you ever grab a mahi, they're they're pretty soft. Their faces are pretty soft. These treble hooks are pretty sticky and they get them pretty good. Um, what if we're looking for wahoo? So I, here's the thing, basically the light, let me, this is probably important to point out. The lighter line I go, um, I'm gonna use trebles. Heavier line, I wanna start bringing in singles because I'm gonna be tightening down my drag, I'm gonna be putting a lot of heat on the fish and I want that one hook point to really get in the fish. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Almost like you're, when you're, uh, you're, you're vertical jigging and you're just using one uh, single hook and you're, you're gonna lock down your drag and put that heat, that's what you wanna do. So okay. that, that's kind of the same thing with the stick baits. Tomorrow we're gonna go for mahi um, using like 50 pound braid, 50 pound floor carbon leader, backing the drag off, you know, they're gonna jump, they're gonna pull some drag. So I'm gonna use these light wire um, travel hooks on this one. Okay, so, so let's dig in. All right, so here's the deal. On this one, what I have found is that you can, on these smaller treble hooks and smaller split rings, this is, you can use uh, basically the same pair, pair of pliers you guys are using for slow pitch jigging, right? Um, when you start to get into bigger style hooks um, and bigger split rings, those are not gonna work. You're gonna have to get a specialty pair. Uh, these are HPAs. Um, Pretty expensive, but they've lasted a long time. Uh, when I went fishing for GT, this is, I bought these because I'm cracking open like two or 300 pound split rings, and that would just, okay. it's a nightmare trying to do it with the other ones. You know so beefy split rings gonna yeah. require a different pair of, right. of the pliers. But these lighter ones, um, the same ones you're using for slow pitch, like the smaller ones, smaller split rings. Mm -hmm. so, some or we can let Johnny do this part. Yeah, you want me to do it? Let me do it. Yeah, yeah, so you I ready? just talked about it. Are you tell me. Then you can just use that. So, all right. So what's easier? I mean, in all honesty, it is easier. Put the split rings on the on the hooks first. Put the split rings on the hooks first. All right, guys. So I'm I'm gonna rig this up. I'm gonna pop this onto the split ring. So I'm using just my standard uh, slow pitch split ring here. Holy oh, crap! Maybe right. I'm using too heavy of. Uh, <laughs> wow, dude. So these are like really stiff for single wrap split rings. All right, I got one on. Yeah. So now I'm gonna just do the other one on the other hook, right? Yeah. Do I want to do I want to spin that that swivel on here at the same time, or I just want to? No, I just find it's easier to just put them on there like that. Whoa. Those are some. I gave you some uh, challenging split rings too. Oh, I really wanted to. Holy uh, cow, dude! What are these made from? Well, they're not going to come undone while you're hooked up. Yeah, that's for darn that. sure. Oh, goodness <laughs> gracious! So put the put the put the swivel on, or no? I didn't catch okay, that. Okay, now you're good, right? So okay. Um, now you want to put these on the. Uh, on the uh, baits. On the bait. Yeah, and okay. one thing, here's one thing that's gonna be, it is a little tough, I wanna show this, but it's totally worth having. This middle, uh, these baits actually have a line through construction, meaning if this bait was to ever break in half, it's not gonna happen. Okay. Uh, but like, I mean, GT, 
big blue You're gonna stay on the fish. Right, it's a wire through construction that goes all the way through the bait, so you won't lose the fish. Right. And coming off of that right here, uh, this is actually gonna spin so that the fish can't use this bait in its mouth as leverage. Oh, So okay. yeah, he can never use the bait. So what that, what I'm, the reason why I'm telling you that is you're gonna have a little bit of fun putting this on right here. Okay. But you'll uh, you'll figure it out. Dude, so I'm thinking, I'm, I'm so, I'm so, tuned into slow pitch I'm yeah. like I'm gonna spin my my swivel on but I'm, I'm then I'm yeah, looking not, at the yeah, bait yeah, I'm like not, no you're, you're definitely not putting yeah, the swivel no. on with the hooks exactly but so. uh okay so I'm gonna go ahead and put these hooks on then here we go the back one's the easy part oh my goodness I'm already sticking with I like this let's go team jig let's go team jig rigging up stick baits man these oh Oh, look I've at got that. some stiff ones. Look yeah, at you can see. Oh, should I call an ambulance? Yeah, probably so. <laughs> <laughs> My God, man, I, this this split ring is just yeah. insanely stiff, and I guess that kind of that's that's kind of the 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 go-to for the guys out there throwing these baits, right? I mean, that's right? the thing. It's a little it's a little harder to put them on, but you're they're not going to open up on you, you know? Right. Right. So this isn't something they, I mean, it's no. I, ideally you rig this before you get out there. Oh, 100%, you want to rig this at home. And really most people that, the guys that are watching this at home, it's not normally this hard with the split rings. I'm just using extra stiff uh, split rings on these. It's just the way I like to fish, you know. And I, I'm one of these guys that gets so jacked up the night before I spend hours uh, rigging up my stuff. So it, it doesn't it doesn't matter. It takes me a little while to get this together. But you definitely want to have these rigged oh, the night before. I've stuck And I think this is totally worth it. We just get to watch Johnny stick himself with hooks a bunch of times. Yeah. I'm bleeding okay, everywhere. So, so now you got your you got your baits rigged up, right? Okay. So the next thing, the way I fish this is your connection, which is going to be just like your slow pitch jigs. You're going to use a swivel to a split ring, and that's what's going to come off the front of the bait. Can you can you just tie straight to that? You totally can. You totally can tie just straight to that. I like to have this connection because I the same way you want to change your jigs during the day. Yeah. I might want to change my stick bait, and I can just do the same thing spin right it there. Off. You spin it off. Yeah. Set a retie. Yeah, and I, I do like the action. You know, having this thing kind of swing free right here it creates some action on the bait so. okay all right here we go here we go and i may have given you another stiff split ring and swivel so yep definitely a stiff split ring <laughs> this is where you don't want to slip because these hooks are so sharp yeah those are those hooks are kind of ridiculous i want to make sure if you get bit on a mahi tomorrow you're not the, gonna, this the hooks are not yeah. the excuse if i 60 yeah. pound mahi i feel right. good i feel that i will definitely land him with this that's right right here so and this isn't a ball bearing swivel it's just a just a standard swivel right nothing nothing fancy about it just a standard swivel all right so spin this baby on and now i am ready to kill now you're you're good to go so we could we could do what's what's the hook configuration that i could do with this right here so you versus, can do you can do two trebles on here um you can do one treble on the belly and an inline single on the back let's just hold this up to show you i'm not going to make you open up those split rings again you know <laughs> you know what i'm saying so this is obviously too big for the bait but this is the idea you can right. have that and you then you also... point it upwards like this right so if i if i was to put this on here let's let's just kind of straighten this out so if i was to put this back hook on here i would want this hook to point straight up and that's why that's that's why the the eye is is sideways the totally. way totally this is really important to point out out. Um, as that's going through the water, it will lift like that. But when you're rigging this bait, you want the hook, you want this point for it to, uh, going backwards okay. instead of like this. So you're going to have the back hook facing that way. This is if you rig two singles, you want them opposite direction like that. Opposite directions. Yep, that's okay. exactly how to rig. What's the benefit of this? Why do I want that? Like, what does it matter whether it's this way or that um, way? Because of how the fish is going to attack the bait, you want the hook point up. In the same way, if you're if you're slow pitch jigging, you don't want your hooks like that. You want right. it, you want it like this, so when they bite. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is technical. Yeah, it's, it's like it's slow the whole pitch, thing. right? Yes, that's, that's cool. what I kind of love it, cool. right? Like, yeah, it's a whole thing. I like getting into. into. Look, this is a, another awesome way to make your wife really mad and dump a bunch of money and more gear between the rod, the reel, the line. This the is the next like, rabbit hole. Yes, this is it. This is it. So, I'm in. Yes, yes. That's Let's it. do it. <laughs> so, yeah. What's up guys? I'm here with pro angler Ryan Hanks and he's going to show us how to throw a popper 
how to throw a stick bait, sinking stick bait. And floating. And a floating stick bait. Let's get it. I can't tell you guys how excited I am to finally see this come to fruition over here and start getting stick baits and poppers uh, over on your coast. It's just, it's money. You catch some big fish on it. And if you guys uh, stick to these techniques we're showing you, you're gonna catch some awesome fish. So next I wanna show you guys the proper way to work a floating stick bait. Um, I'm using the same setup I was just using for the popper. I normally like a medium heavy rod. I'm using that on both because the popper was only 60 grams. So I don't need a heavy popping rod. Uh, the same leader connection here, I'm going to use 100 pound mono because this bait floats as well. So what I'm going to do, uh, once again, the most important part in any of this I'm showing you is the cast. You want an extremely long cast and be able to cover water. So I'm going to cast out there, not hit the trees. So once that bait hits the water, I let it rest for a second. And what it's doing right now in the water is it's sitting with its ass in down, its nose up in the water. And in the same way I was sweeping to make that big uh, explosion with the popper, I'm going to sweep this, uh, this floating stick bait. And what it'll do when sitting like that, it'll bite under and do a violent S kick, leaving a bubble trail and pop back up. And nine times out of 10, you want to wait. You want to leave that little bit of a pause too, because nine times out of 10, they will smash this thing right when it pops back up. This is probably my favorite way to catch a fish out of anything. A floating stick bait is money so I've got my rod pointed out there a little bit of slack same way as the popper and I'm just gonna sweep like that same thing I was doing with the popper almost and it's making that bait just zigzag back and forth really fast leave the bubble trail and pop back up now the difference with the popper and the stick bait is that I'm gonna work this one a little bit faster. I'm not gonna leave super long pauses in between this. I wanna work this bait pretty fast across the top of the water. Um, species like your kingfish, your tuna, a lot, wahoo, a lot of the fish that, are, that move very fast through the middle of the water column wanna see a bait moving fast, and this is what they'll key in on. Woo, look at that, <laughs> that's crazy, isn't it? Now we just need a big snook to come up and smoke this thing. But you can see, I mean, right now, my, my action is I'm moving this a lot faster when I'm doing my sweeps. It's how I prefer to fish it. I'm just letting it sleep under the water, pop back up, and then go. And you don't have to put the part about me going, ooh, and the big snook in this video. No. <laughs> All right, so uh, one of the lures we have over at Johnny Jigs is our 60 gram floating popper. Uh, a time when I want to use this lure is when I want to call fish up from the depths. Um, this puts off a ton of commotion. It's got a big bubble that comes off a big splash and it's going to call them up. I'm fishing this bait on a hundred pound mono leader, which is the opposite of the sink and stick bait. The reason I'm doing that is because mono floats. So it's going to help keep this bait up on the surface. All right. So I'm going to cast this out there and show you the most effective way to work this popper. Um, when I start thinking about popper fishing, I think about jacks, anything in the jack family, uh, amber jack, big jack crevel down here in these inlets will absolutely destroy destroy this. I got my PB Jack, I think it was close to 40 pounds uh, up at Port St. Lucie on this exact color uh, earlier this year. So uh, the proper way to work these poppers is uh, I have my rod tip pointed down towards the water and I'm leaving a little bit of slack off the end of the, uh, the rod tip here. And what you're going to do, you're not working this popper fast. You want to work it, you want to get one hard sweep so it makes the big bubble splash and then leave a pause. They really like that pause. Uh, so I've got my, my bait out there, I've got the rod pointed towards it and I'm just sweeping like that. One sweep and pause. And you can see I'm reeling in my slack as I go back. It's just a, it's a hard stab to the right side of my body, so from left to right. So last, I want to show you about the sinking stick bait. This is the 40 gram fat boy sink. Um, if I had one lure to use running offshore, this would be it. This is the most versatile lure. Uh, what you can do with this lure is you can throw it at breaking fish and burn it across the surface. Uh, this is the lure we talked about earlier where you're saying we wanted to fish on the edge of sargasm mats for mahi. Um, the way I fish this over on my coast is we'll go out to a wreck and I'll make an extremely long cast over the wreck and leave the bale open and let it sink down over the wreck. Uh, I'll even drop a slow pitch jig in between while 
this is sinking down. Then I'll close the bale and work it back over. Um, I've caught so many, I've caught more fish on this one lure than any of our stick baits combined. This is the 40 gram fat boy sink. Uh, if you'll look, I've got a little bit different setup to this one. I'm throwing this on 50 pound braid and I'm throwing it on a 50 pound fluorocarbon leader. That's very important. Fluorocarbon sinks while mono floats. So you definitely want to have a fluoro leader. I found if you start getting heavier fluorocarbons, you know, 60s and 70s, they really stay up in the current. Um, so what I want to use is a 50 pound fluorocarbon leader. All right. So you'll notice I'm going to work this bait a lot faster and more erratic than I did the floating stick bait and the popper. I don't want these fish to get a good look at it. I just want them to come up and know they have to check this bait out. Um, this is like, you know, you waking up in the morning and your, your alarm clock goes off and you reach over and turn it off. It's just a natural reaction to just stop that. That's basically what I'm going to try and trigger with this. This is like playing with a cat throwing a sinking stick bait. So once again, you know, I'm sitting here in a park and I'm worried about trees being over me. So I'm kind of limiting really how far I would bomb this cast out there. I'll say this till I'm blue in the face. The most important part of this game is the long cast. So once it's out there, there's no slack in my line. I'm gonna do a snap, snap, pause, retrieve. And when I say pause, that is very quick. So it's gonna be like this, pointing my rod towards the water and snap, snap, pause, snap, snap, pause. Um, I'll point it like this, snap, snap, pause, snap, snap, pause. I'm gonna work this as fast as I can. So I'm either gonna straight bird it and stop, or I'm gonna do the snap, snap, pause. It's more natural for me to do it the action I switch to second, you know what I'm saying? So let me get this out here and say that again. So once I've casted it out there, it's sank to the desired depth where I want to fish it. I'm pointing my rod tip to the water and I'm going to do a fast snap, Super snap, fast. pause. Snap, snap, pause. Snap, snap, pause. That's how I work it. You can also do a big sweep, a slow sweep of this, but I prefer to work this bait very fast. I get some, some awesome strikes doing that, uh, especially from blackfin. Blackfin like it going very fast like that. All right, so I've let the lure sink to its desired depth. I've got my rod pointed at it, or pointed at the water, and I'm just doing a snap, snap, pause, snap, snap, pause. And you can see this rod load and unload and recoil. And what that is doing, that's affecting the bait. That's putting good action on it. It's also allowing you a good hookup ratio because if you have a fish come and hit very fast on treble hooks, with a very stiff rod, it's gonna tear it out immediately. By having that little bit of play there, it's allowing the fish to have a moment to pull it down and really get so, hooked. And in addition, another really good place to throw these thick baits, whether it's sinking or floating, is on the first reef line running out. Uh, you can get into some uh, Jack Crevel, uh, Tuna, Bonita, Kingfish. Kingfish love stick baits and they have sharp teeth so they like to steal a few. You're going to need to get a few stick baits if you do decide to get in this game. But um, that's an awesome place over here. I mean, I can't impress upon you guys how awesome this coast is for casting. This is, I'm jealous. I mean, and I know Johnny gets on me because he loves the jig for grouper and snapper. I feel like where I live over there in the Gulf, we've got that dialed in. But you guys definitely have the right water to throw stick baits and poppers. And I really encourage you to give it a try. And just remember what I said, it's a compliment to your jigging gear and you'll put some really awesome bonus fish in the boat if you have that and you're prepared.